Well, hey there, fish heads. Good morning. I've missed you. Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates. Today is Tuesday, the 28th of July. July is almost out of here. Wow, this year. It's, uh, it's definitely been a strange year, for sure. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you had a good weekend. I was here. I know I didn't film yesterday. I um, was trying to get some orders knocked out, and uh, they're drying over on the clear coat rack. But I've got some other stuff to show you guys this morning, and we are going to get right into it, starting with these. You guys love to see these. These cicadas. And they're a lot of fun to paint. They're a little tricky to paint. Some hand detailing on the bottom. And red eyes. The I like the red eyes. I don't have any that are fluorescent glow that are this size. I think these are like 3.5 millimeter. But the neat little trick, we'll do some tips and tricks as we go today. Because it's been a while since I've done those. But basically, you can get any eye and then prime it white and then paint whatever you want to paint over that and that's what we did for these cicadas works really well they are fun little eyes to paint and cool looking bait got a couple of those going out to grab life by the fish she's got a youtube channel i will link her um, youtube channel in the description below for you guys awesome angler awesome spirit check her out she's uh in one of my favorites lists as well here on the channel and she has been a pro staffer for i want to say like three years now maybe more three years so check her out heather's an awesome person also got a couple of minis and we'll kind of feature those both at the same time slightly different and this is just playing around with those stencils from Anarchy, from Brian, in the UK. This one's a little bit darker than this one. More like the green sunfish style here and the gill on this one. I love purple in the summer. And I love iridescent or pearlized purple in the summer just because of the shimmer. It's great for profile. And it also, I'll give you guys a close up there, um, also good in stained water and clear alike. Couple of these, well, these are the, the walleye folks love this. It's nice and bright, pops, and the walleye just chomp these bright colors. Bass do too. Pretty much go multi-species on this. But a lot of depth and, and texture, a lot of dynamic to the layering in these baits, which is something I love to do. When you guys ask for wild and crazy patterns, I love giving them to you. And these are glow eyes. And just a couple of those. This is just a pair. But I love the depth. Looks like that paint's jumping off of that bait. It's definitely something fun to paint. This is one complete order, and I normally do a sassy shad a little bit differently, but this is going down to about 15 feet. These are these uh, the G-Fix G87 15As from Duo Realis. And the bait itself was a chrome reflective holographic foiled bait. And I took that to my advantage and you guys can see a little bit of that shimmer. It, the cameras just don't do justice to how much reflective property the bait's going to have underwater. But as you dive down, you lose a lot of the, the coloring on a bait. So the definite triggers are in the reflective properties as well. So we just tricked this out a little bit differently. This is the classic Sassy Shad with a twist. And then a whole bunch of a specific pattern. Um, and when you guys ask for specifics, that's what I give you. And this is so bright that the camera is just really not picking up the differences. It, uh, when I turn it down like that, you can see the orange. But this is a fluorescent orange iridescent mix that just kind of disappears as it goes through the water. So pretty cool on that. And then just the, your fluorescent, the, the fire pattern 
was the request for those and then we had a couple of these as well so always always love making my tournament guys happy and then one more wild request and this is the second bait of a bait that I'd done the other day and those cool eyes and that is what I've got for you guys. You know what? I do have one more thing that I wanted to kind of bring up. Um, now, while I have you guys, we'll put in one more quick tip for the day, and we're going to apply it to swim baits. So, I not everything that I do at Jekyll Baits is straight painting. I do a lot of restorative stuff but most of the time. I don't do that on camera. It takes a lot of effort. It's a lot of focus, and it's labor intensive. And filming that most of the time I think would be boring but if you guys want to see me restore stuff I've done it before um, once or twice and then you guys have asked for specific things but I happen to get a, a division rebel tiny clash and the point that I want to make on this there's nothing wrong with it. it's two pieces now this particular one is not a resin poured bait it is an ABS plastic the plastic is high quality it's a really good swim bait. In fact, it is about $90 retail brand new. But I got this one, and the issue with it was, uh, it wasn't an issue with the paint, paint is paint, um, but when they clear coated it or epoxied it, um, actually I, I'm not quite sure what they used, uh, it was really super thin, no idea. But they must have dipped the head. Um, they had taken it apart but they must have they must have dipped the head because there was an excessive amount in the bill slot of epoxy and what happens with these baits is that the lip will not fit into that slot so there is there is a lip a bill that goes into this and it fits in the slot and you can see that it's a snap-in because they've got little points on there and fits into the bill and then pushes back and snaps in but there was such an excessive amount of resin that had been dunked in here and obviously it didn't come out of the factory that way that it took quite a bit of effort to get that out and um, just FYI folks don't dip your baits brush on epoxy or clear coat on your swim baits for that specific reason I don't care what kind of swim bait it is. The worst thing that you can do if you're brand new and into swim baits is to do something wrong because you won't get the repeat work from your customer. So just just a heads up. Ask questions. Talk to people in forums. There's a lot of online resources that you guys can use to learn about properly addressing issues and painting and clear coating with swim baits. It's not just a quick dip and dunk like you have on regular stuff, these realises or stuff like that. There, it's a little bit more labor intensive and most of the time and it's you've got a lot of finicky customers and they have to be because they're, these, most of these are expensive, the swim baits that you deal with. You have some cookie cutter stuff out there. But you've got a lot of moving parts and you've got pieces that have to fit into other pieces. This obviously has got to fit into the tail. The tail was not a problem on this. But pieces that slide in, pieces that snap in. So just make sure that you do not dip. Brush on your epoxy or whatever it is that you use. If, you use, if you're a KBS user like myself, brush it on. Um, the KBS is pretty cool because it's self-leveling. So you can hang it any old which way, and once it drips away, it's going to be an even layer on your bait. Um, so don't, don't dip a whole lot don't dunk it real heavy because this is a beast to try and dig all that epoxy out from this lip from the slot that is your quick tip of the day thanks so much for hanging out with me this morning I appreciate the view and the company it's always real good company and I will see you guys on the next spray session which should be dropping tomorrow um, I filmed one over the weekend and the editing is almost done on that, and you guys should like it. I'll keep it a surprise. We'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers, and a happy casting from Jekyll Bates.